This revision session will be about land law, and in particular, we will focus on ISMAs. Before we go in more in-depth discussion about ISMAs, I'd like to go through some general tables that is applicable to all the uh, all the exams and coursework um, in, in, in a, in a for, for law. Firstly, it is very important that you analyze your exam requirements. By this, we mean that you need to know what you're required to do on your exam and pr prepare a plan for revision accordingly. For example, if you have a, question, uh, a set of six questions on the exam and you have to answer only three questions, probably the best strategy would be to prepare three topics and be ready to answer every possible question on those three topics, whether it's a problem question or an essay question, rather than try to learn everything that you have covered on the course. Make sure that you are really specializing in those topics that you are planning to answer on the exam. In other words, sports selective studying, but selective studying need to be done with a lot of um, care. Uh, because uh, if you don't do this right, you may have some issues by not being prepared to answer all the questions. But if you do it right, um, this is the way to get a high grade in the simplest way possible. You really need to, after choosing the, uh, the topics that you're going to revise, you really need to practice answering problem and essay questions. So, for example, for land law, if you choose to answer a question on co-ownership, you need to be prepared to answer both problem and essay questions on this topic. And uh, the best way to prepare for this, the best way to be really 100% confident that you will be able to answer this question uh, is to have a look at past exam papers. Uh, past exam papers are really the best way to prepare for your exams because most of the times they uh, the, the questions that come on the exam are very similar to the one uh, that came last year or the year before so make sure that you have practiced a lot with your past exam papers and you are prepared to answer all kinds of question combination on the chosen topics um, and finally, it's highly recommended that you follow your professor's guidelines. What does this mean? So the professor, uh, every professor may have their own style of writing because grading is subjective and there are even some professors who are really, really strict with it. Um, you, some professors have this certain uh, structure that they want you to follow. For example, when you're answering a problem question on Eastman's, some professors may want you to mention specific cases or they may want you to go through the answer in a, in a certain kind of way. So make sure that you really follow your professor's guidelines, if any, and, and mention the cases that the professor has um, emphasized on the, uh, on the lectures. There can be a lot of cases, there are always a lot of cases, but it's highly recommended that you mention the ones that your professor has emphasized on, because if it is mentioned on the lecture and if your professor has spent time on the lecture to explain a specific case, that should be a hint for you that you are expected to mention that case on, in your answer. When you're answering questions, it is very important that you follow the IRX structure, whether it's a problem or essay question, because uh, this way you are really uh, giving a clear structure and you always support everything you say in your answer with uh, relevant legal authorities. First, you state the issue that you are going to discuss, then the applicable law, relevant um, such as case law, or if it's an academic commentary as well, make sure that you discuss the relevant law, then you apply the, the law to the question asked, if it's an essay question, or you apply the law to the facts of the case, if it's a problem question, and make sure that you reference properly. A lot of students lose marks for referencing. If it's an exam, 
they may not um, they deduct marks for referencing, but make sure that you follow the guidelines. So if on the exam you're supposed to at least put footnotes, make sure you do them. Um, referencing can be a, 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 one of the one of the biggest reasons that students are losing marks on. So make sure that you don't lose those easy marks. Today's topic of discussion is ESMADs. What we're going to discuss today are only the general main principles that you need to know about ESMADs and some very important cases. We will also give you an, an example problem question and um, show you how to do the IRAC structure, but it is highly recommended that you go through the, our notes because we're only giving you a very short overview of ISMANs and you really need to read the full document in order to have a full understanding of all the cases that you need to know and um, all the legal principles that you need to know about ISMANs. Our resources should be used with your lecture slide. If you read both, that is the best way to give yourself the best chances of getting the first class. Uh, first, we start with the definition. Land is meant as where one, a, a landowner allows the use of their land to another landowner for the benefit for that other landowner. The classic illustration is when one landowner says to his neighbor, you can walk over my garden to get on the local train station. This is a classic right of way over someone's land as it gives the other person an easement over their land. This is a proprietary right. This is very important for you to understand that this is not a personal right. If someone gets an easement, that means that it runs with the land uh, and it's not uh, a personal right that you grant to someone. This is the key case. Every problem question or essay question about easement usually starts with the discussion of this case. Make sure that you memorize this case and you also memorize the four requirements, the four criteria that was established in the Ellenborough Clark case, what is required to, con uh, to constitute easement. Firstly, there must be a dominant and a servient tenement. The easement must accommodate the dominant land. The easement must be owned or occupied by different people. And easement must be capable of forming the subject matter of a grant. The last requirement uh, is um, has a lot of other considerations to discuss, but we will only focus on these four key requirements today. So make sure that you memorize them for your problem question. Usually to, ans to answer a problem question on easement, you will be required to read uh, the facts of the case and assess whether or not these four criteria, Ellenborough Park four criteria, are present. Is there a dominant and servant uh, tenement? Does the easement accommodate the dominant land? And all the four questions must be dealt with in detail. The most important point for the first requirement is that there must be two landowners. This is quite easy to see on the fact on the fact of the problem question if there are two landowners. The easement must accommodate the dominant land. Sometimes it can be confusing which land is accommodating uh, the other. You need to make sure that in the problem question, if when you are discussing easement, the dominant, uh, the, the, the easement must accommodate the dominant land. The easement must be for the benefit of the land and not for somebody exercising a personal right on the land. Hill versus Tapo is a good case that illustrates what is the difference between personal and proprietary rights. In Hill versus Tapo, the owner of uh, the canal granted Hill the exclusive right to put the pleasure boats on the canal for profit. And the issue was if this was a personal right or a proprietary right uh, enough to constitute an easement. It was held to be a personal right 
which did not benefit the land as such. It did not accommodate the land leased to Hill. Instead, it was only for the benefit of Hill's business. Hill's only remedy was to sue the cattle company for breach of contract. Therefore, if it's a personal right, the remedy is breach of contract. But if it's a proprietary right, you can um, the, the remedy is easement. The easement must be owned or occupied by different people. There must be two parcels of land owned by two different people. Easement must be capable of forming the subject matter of a grant. For something to be an easement, it must meet the criteria as if it was being written in a formal document signed by a dead. They must be capable, um, the, the criteria for being a subject matter of a grant is that there must be a capable grantor and capable grantee. The easement must be capable of reasonable, exact definition. The easement must be within the general categories of established easements. The easement must not involve any expenditure by the servant owner and the easement must not be so extensive as to deprive the servient owner of possession. Therefore, we first discussed the four criteria of Allen Borough Park in a problem question on easements. And after that, we discussed this um, criteria, whether or not there, are, there is a capital grant or a grantee. And the most important here is um, if, the easement is within the general categories of established easements. How do you know that? You need to go through all the cases that we have on easement and see if the facts of the case that you have in the problem question are similar to any of the cases where the court has already established that easement exists. For example, if it's um, if a right of way is an established easement, um, a parking place, a right to park uh, on someone's land could also be a, an easement, but there are some, some um, categories that have not yet been established um, as an easement. So you make sure that in the problem question that you are discussing, the facts of the case is one of the already established categories of easements according to the case law that you've been given by the professor. About capable grantor and capable grantee, the person granting the easement must be capable to do so, has to be a freehold owner of a property. So if he has to have a right to grant, a proprietary right to someone else on the lending question. Easement must be capable of a reasonably exact definition. The right claimed as an easement must be clearly definable or defined. A case about this, Harris versus the Pina, uh, it was held that the right to a flow of light through an undefined channel could not be an easement because it was too vague or too indefinite. So if something is too vague or too indefinite, for it to be quite a proprietary right, most probably it won't be an easement. So the, the problem question should give a scenario where it seems that it's not too vague or too indefinite to grant um, a right of easement. Moreover, the easement must be within the general categories of established easements, as we already said. Miller versus Anchor products, an easement to use a neighbor's bathroom was successfully established. So for example, if you have using a bathroom uh, in a problem question, you would know that according to the case of Miller, it can be um, a, a, a successful, uh, it can be established successfully as an easement. So you need to make sure that the facts of the case, the problem question are or have already been recognized as an easement in any of the cases. An easement must not involve any expenditure by the servant owner. The courts do not want the person with the burden of the easement to have any expenditure. 
Uh, Rhymes versus Alvin, Lord Justice Brian Wilkinson stated that it is an essential feature of an easement that it merely requires the owner of the Serbian tenement to suffer something to be done on the Serbian tenement, a positive obligation on the owner of the Serbian tenement to do something is inconsistent with the existence of such an easement. An easement must not be so extensive as to give the dominant tenement possession of the Serbian land. So it gives a right to use the Serbian land, but not the possession, not the entire possession of the, of the land. The essence of an easement that it's a right to make use of someone else, not to claim joint or exclusive possession of the land. Once a claim meets the criteria for being an ISMA, it needs to come to an existence. There are several ways uh, that you need to discuss the one that is um, applicable to the facts of the case given in the problem question, or if it's an essay question, of what, whatever is relevant to the question asked. Um, it can be created by grant, reservation, and implied prescription. Make sure that you don't become too uh, descriptive. A lot of students make that mistake and they lose them the marks for becoming too, uh, too descriptive. By this, I mean that it, it, you won't get any marks by trying to put all the cases you have heard about Ismond in your answer. You will only gain grants if, uh, if you will only gain marks if you are able to give relevant cases and relevant arguments according to the problem question or essay question that has been given to you. It's not about writing a lot, it's about writing what's relevant, making the relevant arguments with the IROC structure. So if your problem question is about the, it's more relevant to discuss the uh, prescription, you shouldn't discuss all of the four ways of creating an easement. You should just discuss the one that is relevant. This is an example problem question. This is just one small part of it. It's not the full version. Full, the full problem question and a model answer you can find on our website. Hannah recently bought the registered freehold title. 235 Clarksdale Road, a large house in Clapham with a heated outdoor swimming pool. Soon after moving in, Hannah received a letter from Luca, who lives next door at number 37. The letter, which is accompanied by full document, states, three years ago, I agreed with your predecessor sign title, Nancy, that anyone who holds the freehold title 235 Clarksdale Road must henceforth ensure that the driveway to 37 Clarksdale Road is kept free of leaves and litter. Is this an easement? This is what you need to discuss here. If, um, because if it's an easement, it doesn't matter that she did not sign this document, it is capable of um, binding the predecessor, the the future owners of the land because it's a proprietary right it runs with the land even if the land is sold it will still bind the future owner we have a model answer to this question this is just an extract from the question but the full question we have a model answer that you can see on our website it's a 2165 percent about 55 percent level answer you cannot copy it it's uh, it will be academic misconduct if you do uh, you can just use it for educational purposes to just read and, and learn how to answer a problem question on easements and it's highly recommended that you follow a similar structure if you need a, a, a help with a specific question, whether it's uh, for planning the assignment or for doing the legal research, I suggest you book an appointment, book a tutoring session with one of our tutors who will be able to help you. As we said, when we answer a problem question on 
Eastman's, we need to always start with Ellenborough Park criteria. This, this is the starting point. You don't need to repeat the Ellenborough Park criteria a couple of times in the problem question, because most probably you will have different scenarios to talk about. You can just state the Ellenborough Park criteria, the four criteria, in the beginning of your answer and just apply it yeah, to every scenario without having to repeat it. We, uh, here we just uh, state what are the four criteria and then we um, discuss the first issue, which is if HANA must uh, keep property 37's driveway leaf and laser free, if, it's, uh, if um, this could be an easement. This implies a positive obligation to clean the driveway. The obligation is included in a private agreement evidenced by document A between Nancy and Luca, and thus appears to be a positive covenant. There are evidently two pieces of land, property 35 and the Baden land and 37, the benefit land. So as you can see, we are applying the Limborough Park criteria to this, uh, to this case. We established that there are two pieces of land, two owners, and this is a positive obligation. A P35's owner had a positive duty to maintain the cleanliness of the driveway. Positive covenants do not run with the land. This means that the obligation will not pass with the land to the new owner, Hannah. Nancy was bound, but Hannah is not. This is not possible in common law and in equity. So as long as you apply the criteria and cite the relevant authorities and make relevant arguments, you should be able to get a high grade. You can read the full answer at this link. You will receive the link as well as the recording if this session ends with it. Here is the recommend, recommended reading from us. You are highly recommended to have a look at our notes. We have notes on every topic that uh, most of the times come up on LLB and other undergraduate law degrees. And make sure that you have a look at all of our notes to prepare for your exams. Example essays are also highly recommended for you to read because this teaches you how you're supposed to answer essay, uh, essay and problem questions. And it teach, shows you how you're supposed to do critical analysis. One thing is to know the law and the other thing is to be able to answer essay and problem questions it is very, it, it, it requires extra training and extra practicing in order for you to be able to apply your knowledge of law to the problem and essay questions. That is why we have our example essays on our website because the notes are not enough. You need extra practice. Make sure you read them. Cases are very important for you to be able to know uh, enough cases to form critical analysis because you know your arguments have to be based on legal authorities. And usually this, these are cases, especially about Eastman. Eastman is very heavily based on cases. Quizzes and flashcards are important resource for us especially for the students who have in-person exam or who have timed exam uh, and they are required to memorize a lot of information. If you are one of those students who are required to memorize the information, quizzes and flashcards are a very good way to practice uh, to make sure that you, uh, you know by heart all the cases and principles that are the most important for the purpose of landlord examinations. Now, how can we help? I'd like to say a couple of words about it. Uh, we have a team of content creators who are the best students and graduates and um, who have gotten high grades recently. They've been in your shoes. They know how it is, what struggles law students experience and, and they've been successful. And we have structured all our resources in the simplest and most condensed man manner possible to make sure that all the other students are equipped with the right resources, the right information to maximize the chances of getting high grades. And we have notes, essays, tutorial videos, quizzes, flashcards, studying exam tips, and even um, interactive learning community where you can ask questions on our WhatsApp groups.
if the resources we give you are not enough, you're highly recommended that you have a look at our tutoring services. Tutoring services are more personal support where you book time with a tutor to, to have a one-to-one -one meeting on Zoom and discuss um, anything you may be struggling with on, on whether it's um, preparation for your exams or doing a little research. Whatever you're struggling with, our teachers will be able to help you. We have already helped thousands of lower students get high grades. Re our regular students usually get a first class, so you should make sure that you study regularly and not only study, but also practice with our model essays. We would like you to be our next student to get high grades. Join Simple Study now and also make sure that you join our free study groups on WhatsApp to ask um, questions to our community if you need to. Thank you for your attention.